Here we go. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. This is the uh, Council of Misfits podcast, our first podcast today. Woo! You guys excited? I'm <laughs> I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> awesome. Super awesome. psyched. I'm well, sorry. hey, we're just, yeah. a, we're just a group of family that, that just decided to come together and, and uh, just give our, our fun perspective, some witty humor, and um, represent some individuality for anybody who's listening, because uh, we are a group of misfits, that's for sure. Um, you this know, uh, Motley Crew, if you will. Yeah, this podcast is for those that think they sound good in the shower when they sing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> those kind of people. Yes. All those, all those unspoken heroes. <laughs> so I'm James. I'm 25, and if you don't overcome the feelings of the inferior, you'll never make the mistakes to become superior. Right. My name is Terrell. I am 41, as they stated. Whatever it is that kill you, it makes you stranger. Um, my name's Ian. I'm 21 years old, sitting pretty. And are you dying to live or living to die? Yeah, that's the real question. It's a Tupac lyric, if you guys don't know. And from what you can tell from my voice, I love Tupac. My name is Alex, and I am filled with determination. There you go. Wait, how old are you? I, <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. It's a mystery to even me. <laughs> I'm 24. <laughs> hey, that, sounded, that, sounded, that sounded pretty confident. <laughs> Well, hey, we're, we're super excited to be with you guys, and we're just super excited for anybody listening to today's podcast, and uh, we're going to cover a lot of topics today. Um, you know, first, we're going to cover retro games, jobs, um, the uh, current event of COVID-19 and how everybody's doing this quarantine season, and then finish off with some 2D animation. Uh, first question of the day is, um, what is the most impactful retro game to you and why? And we're going to start off with my good man, Taro, here. Uh, let's, let's define okay retro, retro game. game. Yeah. When you guys say retro, retro game, you mean like just like, like a mm, like a Mario game? game? Um, so like on the the, the old NES. NES. Yeah, you know? well, that, actually, I played the Atari, but I didn't. It wasn't impactful because I didn't play it that much. When I my real experience was playing like the Nintendo and like Super Mario Brothers and and stuff like that. You know, that's really what I, I got it playing. And for the record, my brother was always the person to beat the shit. I never beat it. I got frustrated. I've never made it through Super Mario Brothers 2. I'm probably not going to. <laughs> Have you ever broken any controllers? Like, thrown them at the screen? Oh, yeah. I jumped all the way across the screen, all the way across the, the, uh, the room, screaming, <laughs> and, like, beating on it and saying it cheats. I have been a poor sport. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to play around. It really gets to you, doesn't it? You know? Oh, my gosh. I was just playing, like, baseball games, you know? Just, like, you know, there's, like, my player modes on baseball games, and they make it so where you start off sucking, right? Because you just get into the league or you're in college baseball or whatever. And I hated that part. So I never made it to the major leagues. <laughs> because like, I'd get so pissed because my guy. Real life in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> I would get so pissed because my guy sucks so early on, and I was like, when is he going to get better? You have to, you know, it takes time, like anything in this world does, you know? But I ran out of time. What was your game, Terrell, that you, you said? Mine was really Mario Brothers. How many are there? The first Mario Brothers. Which one left the most impact on you? I still play the first Mario Brothers. I still love that game. I played it hacked. I played it on the computer. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to get swatted. You freaking talking about hacked. You, hey, hey, well, if you technically legally own the game, you can do whatever you want with the actual information. And he did, for all copyright purposes. Yeah. I mean, I played the game every way you can play it. record. I've never, but I've even, I've even, um, but I never played it on the, the handheld consoles. I just, you know, in real life, you're not that money. I didn't have one. And it was already not cool when the time I got around into it, so I never did the 2D action. And I didn't like Mario 64. I still don't. I don't care who knows that. <laughs> I got out of it, man. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Hey, um, Alex, what, what's, what's your retro, retro game? You know, um, I feel like Ian, Alex, and I um, uh, are kind of around the same age. But Alex, I guess we'll start with you. You know, like, what's your most impactful retro game? To you? My most impactful retro game that left an impact on me as a kid was Ocarina of Time, The wow. Legend of Zelda. Song. That game, not only was it a little bit adult in terms of like themes, but that game was also my favorite genre of game. And it, it determined what my favorite genre of game is. 
because I like adventure games. I like, you know, sword, shield, bow, and you just go and kill, slay giant monsters, basically. What genre is that? I don't know. I would say adventure. Like playing RPG? Yeah. Sort of, you know? Yeah, RPG is kind of a, kind of a vague category. Anytime, anytime you actually level up or progress in any form, it's actually technically the characteristics of an RPG. We technically usually traditionally think of them as like like World of Warcraft, things like that, but the qualities are generic enough they don't necessarily extend I, There's also and MMOs. Which yeah, 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 that's... Yeah. Like, like MMORPG. They kind of, they kind of blended, blended together to where they originally weren't. That's, that's fair enough. Yeah. Originally, like, that game was less childish in nature because there's a lot of stuff in that game that was pretty horrifying when you think about it. <laughs> I'm playing it as a kid. I remember some pretty scarring shit from that game. But as, a, as an entire experience, like, I remember it over every other game that I played. It's, it's the, the one that always stuck, stuck with me. The villain's name is was freaking... Uh, Ganondorf? Yeah. <laughs> like that, like, distorted Darth Maul-looking guy, you know? <laughs> that was tough, man. Yeah, 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 I mean, okay, Star Wars is going to be a big topic in this in this podcast, too, I imagine. Oh, you don't, didn't you say you don't like Star Wars, Terrell? I don't like Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, or Harry Potter. Wow, we just lost half our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're okay, I'll watch them, but I'm not going to, like... I just thought, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm out of the age group that they're really shot at, or they're just not. Magic's just not my cup of tea. It doesn't have a lot of rules. And you watched Game of Thrones, and I had fantasy elements. It had loads of sex and violence. So <laughs> but magic in general just kind of like, I have a bigger wand than you. There's not like in science fiction, it makes sense why the guy beat you. Like, he, you know, he. He, he has, has a bomb, bomb or he's smarter. smarter. They always had to find some gizmo, and I was like, like meh. Oh, so you, oh, so you don't, don't like, like, the Jedi aspect, aspect of it? Like, the Force? Yeah, you know, you know, the, the Force, force I liked because it wasn't, it took, it's a monk, so it took skill. Like, the guy was better than you because he earned it. Yeah. He, like, he, he had more intuitive knowledge, or, you know, there was a reason for it. I like, I guess, reason-based. Not just, you know, you just whip him because you got some special thing. Yeah, yeah you're just like, like Harry, Harry Potter, Potter, you have yeah, some, some, some scar on your head. And you That's why do I don't it like it. Magic, Magic and it doesn't hook up for Hermione. Dude, <laughs> the most unrealistic <laughs> thing in there. Wrong. Well, what's, uh, what's, what's yours, Ian? Tell, tell us your favorite retro game. Ah, oh, man. I, you, you know, know what? what? I don't think, think I've played video, video games it, like as a kid, for that. Well, as a kid, I did, but... When, when I, th I I think of like when I think of retro, I think of like PS2. That's like the furthest I went back was PS2. Well, I would say the PS1 is probably a retro console. PS2, I don't know if it's it's kind of like in a middle gray area kind of. Because I played PS1, but there wasn't a lot of games that I remember from playing PS1. But PS2, like I played uh, this Matrix game where you could like you could. You, you could can slow, slow down time, and you can, can like run on the walls and jump off the wall, and kick someone in the face, and then, and then like pick up their gun and start shooting. All in slow motion too. too. So <laughs> sick. So I remember that. I remember that. And there was this one part. I never beat the game because, like I tell you, I suck at games. So I freaking got to this part where it's like a car chase scene, and I can never get past that part. And then I have one of my episodes again where you like you know throw the controller wherever you want. And we all do. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that's that was. I mean, not. <laughs> don't put me off, Terrell. <laughs> so that was that was. I I don't remember that for a really long time, but I'm like you. I like the sword, shield, and you know, like uh, the Elder Scrolls series is big. You know, it's not very old, but that was very impactful. Well, also, also, have you played those games, the Elder Scrolls games? Uh, no. I'm, and I'm you should play them. Probably not going to. Just to let you know. It's not, I like things. Carol so is what I like to call a video game hipster. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. This it's just it's like a movie that you're not gonna watch. You're like, eh, hey, here's three hours. You're like, ooh. Oh no, the Elder Scrolls series are way longer than three hours. No, I'm not doing it for that reason, though. They're so. <laughs> I'll get Terrell, bored. You can spend no, the most long complex time. thing Terrell plays is Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Even then, I don't play it for the purpose. To be honest, I kind of just. I just goof off. You don't commit it? Okay. No, no, I just love to commit random acts of violence and steal shit. Let's get a picture of him so we can show it to the police just in case. Yeah, yep. Dude, I love stealing things. Thank you. It's so fun. It's so much better than the plot. The plot takes so much effort. I'm just like, I remember this one of them, I was lining people up. I was stealing cars in a row, killing the people inside the car just to see how many I could get before the cops come and took me out. 
I made my own. That's why I liked it because it was it's nonlinear and it's it's open worlds, which is nonlinear. So because you, you're not defined by rules. The more I got into games, the more I didn't want rules anymore. I'm like I like like when you're a kid. I like playing pretend. I didn't want to play other people's games. So when I got older, I'm just, I kind of just did it more. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I like that there's no rules. And not to mention it's, it's hard, so you just get pissed off. Now I'm like, no, nah, I'll do this. I like doing this. If I can keep doing this, have fun. I'm like, Ooh, I wish there was more st shit to steal in the game. I want skateboards. I try to steal a train. <laughs> you should play Red Dead Redemption then. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's that trains over. Need some more sandbox games. games. Yeah. I love the idea of sandbox. I'm gonna make a game. That's what I'm gonna do. Yes, yes. yes. Dreams. Dreams. That, All right, James. James. What, what, are you, what are you? What are you thinking? Huh? Retro, retro gaming. First game pops. Well. To be honest, I liked a lot of things, and if I gotta say the most impactful, I'm trying to think of like what's impactful to me when I was playing retro games, you know? When I think impactful, I'm all like, oh man, it must have really hit me, but really I'm just like, I'm looking for a way to escape boredom, and I think the game is the most fun with, you know? Fond, fond memories yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I know you said Mario. I mean, there's a lot of games, and, and you know, if we're talking about the PS2 being a little gray area, I think the GameCube is the same thing. Okay. Yeah. But if we're going by half my age, I mean, 13 and a half years old, man, I wasn't even playing the GameCube anymore, you know, yeah. until I got older and I got nostalgic, you know. Yeah. But uh, 13 and a half years old? Yeah. I don't know. What is that? Doing, that, whatever, Doing 13 year old stuff. Driven, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, middle schooler does, you know. I was also into drugs back then, too, but no, well, that's a different story. But, uh, it's a couple episodes away. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of episodes away. Um, <laughs> but uh, for me, I think when I was growing up, I had a Super Nintendo, and Super Mario 3 or Super Mario World were like the top that I played like the most of. I'd probably have to say Super Mario World because you got Yoshi, you know what I mean? And you'd I get Yoshi. And I love getting the cape. <laughs> And you just get the cape and fly on Yoshi and then find all the secrets and stuff. But Super Mario 3 was probably better for me because I knew all the secrets already. Super Mario World was kind of like I didn't have anybody teach me that stuff. Like like with Super Mario 3, I had an Are uncle. you one of the, secret, the people that like gets the accomplishments and gets the, the guys and like conquers stuff? Because that feels like that's a different person. There's the person that plays it, like Alex, that button mashes, that doesn't make it anything. And there's like my brother who's who's out to conquer it. It will yeah, be... Yeah, 100% it, yeah. yeah. You made me sound like some chump. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say that for me, at that, at that age, I don't remember having a lot of forethought with my playing. It was just like, oh, okay, my uncle showed me how to do that. That's cool. Okay, it makes it to where it's easier. I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, as far as conquering goes, that's totally me now because I want to feel like I actually won and did something and even with like the later Mortal Kombat like especially Deadly Alliance where you had combos that were 14 buttons long oh, yes. you know um, I, I like, like to challenge, challenge myself to master them I don't think I ever used them after that but you know <laughs> it's like but I, I'm out there to conquer I want to feel like I, I achieved something you know but uh, yeah definitely Super Mario 3 would have to be mine so. dude that Italian bastard is drilled in our heads isn't he yeah dude that's so funny though I'm just thinking like oh I know how to program a computer oh I know the 14 button combo in Mortal Kombat <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's so true, true, you know. Um, it's an accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, I consider it one. Like, like the, the cheat codes, like, too, in yeah. GTA. Yeah, oh, like yeah, cheat codes. <laughs> like, San Andreas, I remember, like, we had, like, a book that yes. had all of them written. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all the cheat codes. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta load the tank <laughs> and take <laughs> on the five stars, you know what I mean? See yeah. how long you could last. I like the car that had, like, when you run into shit, it would just explode everything that it touched. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love the cheating things like that. It just makes it so much more fun. Yeah, no, it, 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 and, and it was when I was a kid. Now it's like I got an ego or something because it's like, oh, I don't want to use cheat codes because then I don't really win. But then you, you secretly do it anyways, and then you're like, oh, this is so much fun. But then, like, then you don't really, I don't really feel accomplished unless I do it without the cheat codes. Well, when now, I play a game like Grand Theft Auto, I'm not trying to beat yeah, anything. Yeah, but when you had like Turok, I still remember that cheat code FMNFB. Yeah, <laughs> that was how you got unlimited ammo, big head, so you could snipe everybody, you know. It was, yeah. It's just like, you know, cheats are great, you know. Like, even now, I, I wish, like, we'll get into emulators probably later, but, like, like where you could just, with Pokemon, you can put a cheat code in and get your Team 6 you've always dreamed of just by walking in the grass, you know. <laughs> like, but anywho, moving on to our second question about retro games, um, we'll start with Terrell again. Um, like, which retro game 
do you believe should be remade that hasn't been remade already? And we're talking like, not like Mortal Kombat where it's like, oh, they should remake Mortal Kombat when we're on 11. You know what I mean? Like, like on that same note, they should stop making Street Fighter. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it was good back in the day. Fourteen versions of the same thing. No. Um, there's games that, that, that we talked about earlier would be good because it's the video games basically are the sandbox that you want to play. When you're a kid, they're limited. As an adult, man, pff, I'd love to play Gauntlet. I like the idea of swords and shit like that. And there's there's you have there's like puzzles you have to figure out. There's a lot to it. I mean, how how would it look? If, if they remade it through Terrell's vision. Well, ooh. I, dude, I, the elf would be dope. I love the elf. He could run as fast as he could throw the arrow. You know, he was, he was, if you got, it's like, you know, everybody has a char that character that's so good. Chung Lee in Street Fighter, you really mastered her, you're an animal. Mm -hmm. And the elf was that. You, if you got, if you got him, because he could move as quickly as you could make him run. If you could turn a corner, 90 miles an hour, you could do it right. That's what I love about old games. If you were you were um, you were rewarded for being good at it, if you could do some crazy shit that no one else could do, you got rewarded. Like for instance, do constant ice things, like in uh, in like um, Sub Zero. Com. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that cheap move you used on me, where you just kept spamming the uh, ice button. Uh, I know. Oh no, I know what I'm doing. I, just keep doing I don't apologize. She couldn't beat me. And she did beat me eventually. I though. did beat you eventually, yeah. yeah I just jumped, jumped over the eye. <laughs> I just made you work for it. <laughs> She's like, this cheap. I'm like, you can't get around it? How cheap is it? Uh, I love my brother, though. Joe, just sitting there commentating, and like, this part of the game, and just laughing at me because I was struggling. I'm like, when I, when I go up against you later, I'm going to put some stink on it. Dude, people, I love when people, like, my dad was weird like that. It didn't matter if it was a part of the game. We were playing Mario Kart. And you can throw turtle shells and do stuff, and it's the part of the game. It's like, that's cheating. I'm like, Dad, it wouldn't let me do it. It's a video game if it was cheating. You know, it's like, you're just a poor sport. It's part of the game just because you don't don't use the turtle shells doesn't make me a jerk for doing it. Right, right. Uh, so, so I kind of want to hear a little bit more about Gauntlet because I played it myself, and it was pretty cool for its time. Um, like There's like 100 levels. Like, that you're talking thing. about just the elf, but, like, would there be – because I feel like Gauntlet – it kind of just had an objective, and then you had like all these levels to go through. Like, but would there be a plot story? Or would it just kind of be the well, same thing, just with the better plot graphics? Is, and more? It's, 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 all of them kind of have games like that have simple, like even Shadow of the Class, they have a simple plot. You're the good guy, and you have to go rescue the maiden, something like that. But the part I would like to it update it is I would like to explore what the other characters can do. Because with better graphics, the barbarian dude, he had a big old, he had, a, he had an axe. That would be gnarly, <laughs> going on some, uh, going after some uh, orcs and stuff. Oh yeah, I want to get some. I want to. I want. I want some. Uh, I want some blood. Uh, I'm not lying to myself. Would you like? Would you like something that's like an updated remake of the 2D game, or would you want? No, three. I want three. I want. If you're gonna you're gonna put it in the modern world, I want it to be better. That's what happens when they make the game same like the Street Fighter. They didn't update it. They got better graphics. It's still a 2D game. You're still like, eh. Yeah. I don't Moving need left to right. <laughs> you still don't need 14 versions. Like you could have just kept one. Yeah. They're not gonna really gonna they add. Did the same anything. thing with Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Yes. That's and true. I didn't play them after a while. Of course, I lost interest. But those fatalities are pretty sick. I, you know I, I like them having new games because they develop new moves for the characters that I think are better. But they still keep some of the original stuff. Although, like, although with Mortal Kombat, though, if you do the story mode, at least on the last one I played, it is kind of like a free roam until you get to that part in the story where it's like all one on one. Mm -hmm. You know. But uh, but that's just something. But anyway, oh this, that one. What was that one called? Mortal Kombat? It was like Armageddon or something? Oh, where you create your own character? Yeah, that yeah, was that, so one's sick. Sick. that was sick. That one was so, so fun. You got to give it its own special powers. You got to give it its own story. Yeah, it was yeah. Own yeah. Moveset. What? Moveset, yeah, dude. Dude, it, it's awesome. It was great, man. They need to do that again, but it takes so much time with the graphics now. I, I don't care. I'd wait 10 years for that game. Um, but uh, <laughs> games like that, if you put that extra little bit, you probably never move on. You used to be making you just like there's a lot of I look that's it brings me to another point I always like I like the idea of user created content 
Like you kind of like I think every game should have it. Like Grand Theft Auto, I love what they do, but I still like to make my own level. Yeah, it's like creative control. I feel like it's great. It's great for the for the sellers if somebody buys it and then they feel like they're making it their own or or putting them. I think a lot of people, whether they read books or watch a TV show or listen to music, they want to put themselves in it. You yeah, you want to put your they, own stamp on it. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. You're, you're that's why we sing. That's why we sing. You know, songs like let's sing along to our favorite songs because like you know we want to hear how we sound too. Yeah, that makes you a lot want, of sense. You want to make it your own. Yeah, it it really does. It makes it, it does make it experience. And also, games have been generated out of user created content. No, that's super cool. But hey, let's move on. Ian, I want to hear what your retro game that's going to be remade. What it looks like. What it sounds like. What it tastes like. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is going to be kind of interesting actually because okay, have you guys ever played like the Fallout games? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know how there's like okay. Because I've only ever played Fall Three and Beyond, right? But I know there's like a Fall Two and a Fallout One, and it was like, a, yeah, yeah. There's older ones. There's older ones, and I've seen like gameplay of it and stuff. And I think it'd be not just. I mean, I'm sure it'd be easy for me to just go like look it up, you know. But I think it'd be cool if they remade those, and then I was able to play it kind of like with the modern flavor. I think that'd be sick. Also, it'd be a lot easier for me. So, <laughs> yeah. But just stuff like that. I mean. When I'm when, while we're talking, all I'm thinking about is like when I'm when I play games, you know, kind of like how you're saying you want to kind of I like it to be just easy, you know, like you turn it on, you drop drop into wherever you're gonna do, and then just freaking Get you have point. fun immediately, you know what I'm saying? So um, I, I guess I'm the only one here who has patience. <laughs> oh no, I like sustenance, that's for sure, definitely. I like it when there's when there's like a, a, a struggle to overcome, and then you get like after about you know 40 to 100 hours of the game, now you're OP because you worked for that. You know? Yeah. Dark Souls, that type of crap. For that. <laughs> Dark Souls looks crazy. I played that. I played that a couple a couple Dude, of times. My life got like... wrecked by Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> I got hit with a boulder down the stairs. That is not what I thought my experience was going to be like. And then I got destroyed by the first boss I encountered. Dude, that, that ga- whole game is like you're getting hit by boulders all the time. It's just, oh my gosh. But Seth, you know what's crazy? Seth has, um, Seth's my little brother. He has the Switch, right? Mm-hmm. He's playing on the Switch, dude, on this little thing. And he's like pretty far into it too. I'm like, bro, I can't even play with like a like a 50 inch TV and you're playing it on like what? I mean, it's small. <laughs> yeah, like, but dude, the Switch is cool. I gotta admit, dude, that thing I is just awesome. want a first-person shooter. That that would be the zenith to me. A game, it's first person that you could hold in your hands. I would, it's as soon as first person came out. When it first came out, I was done. I was like, other games, lame. Yeah, because it solves all the problems. You're the character. That that sounds really intriguing. Because I would love to have like a virtual reality first-person shooter where like the controller feels kind of like an AR or something like a machine gun, mm-hmm. you know, and then maybe you got a little like pocket pistol, like a little mouse, like a little clicky mouse or something like that connected to it. That way you got those options, you know, and because that would be super cool. Just like the way virtual reality is like, I'm not very experienced in it, but it seems like it, there's well, a lot actually it could do. Uh oh. Oh yeah. I have this for my VR. Oh, wow. Oh, you're one controller. Because you guys can definitely see what we're looking at right yeah. now. But just just picture the, the gun from the PlayStation VR. That's what it is. <laughs> Great description. Yeah. Well, they can fucking Google it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. People are like, they're like, ah, that's too much. <laughs> well, Alex, uh, you're up. What's, your, what's the retro game? What's the retro game I want to remake? I, I'd say the very first Castlevania. Mm. I'd want them to make that like a full, like... Third person 3D, like Castlevania game. You know they got a show on yeah, Netflix, they got right? Yeah, Netflix they got an anime. Could you imagine, <laughs> like, like? Was it good? It could def- it definitely it. has yeah. definitely has some plot points you could add in there now. What the the anime? No, for like when you remake the game. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Because you're gonna remake it. Nobody oh, else. Oh yeah, because I'm I'm gonna do the work of a whole studio. Dreams. It's the platform, it baby. It's a real life thing. You can make games. <laughs> this guy's the number one advocate here. Not sponsored by anybody. Yeah, yeah, not sponsored by Dreams, but yeah. anything is a cool idea. I'm down with. I'll be the spokesman. I don't care shit. It. it just looks. It's it, oh man. Even the view, the view, like you're trying to make a vehicle. You know, that looks pretty tough. Yeah, believe me. I, I felt good about myself before making this stuff. 
Just watch, just try to make a straight bridge. It really makes you appreciate game developers. Yes. Yes. De appreciate more like I'm like, I'm not going to be that guy. There's a reason these people make stuff. He's devoted years of time to staying inside, years of just skill that I do not pet. I'm not going to achieve in 30 minutes of trying to do this. <laughs> but not only that, but the people that made Dream had to do all the programming stuff just so you can easily make a game that's difficult to make. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of those love projects because it sounds on paper, it sounds like a not a great like money maker. You're like, yeah, you know, get people to make games. I can't see, I can see a suit not being down with that. Well, how are you gonna sell it? Is, is it a game or is, what, what do you do with it? That sounds more like they're like, no, it's, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna give a whole generation. You're gonna, you got you, that pep talk. That guy's like, oh, you just, you just need to see the bigger picture. He's like, if I can't, I, I want, I don't, yeah, I don't need, I have money. I don't need bigger picture. We need to make money off this. You can go make your artsy. You can make a bigger picture that looks like money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I'm not that funny. I'm really a business executive, but yeah, you, you get the point. <laughs> yeah, that guy's nose probably turned a little brown trying to get that game going. For oh, sure. Yeah. Definitely, man. He was he was uh, he was having to use a plunger to get his head out of that butt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh man. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a pretty interesting image right there. <laughs> Which brings me to my my game. No, I'm just I don't know if you guys ever heard of this, but uh, uh, plungers. No, uh, my game actually it was called Metal Warriors. It was uh, also for the Super Nintendo. It was super cool. If you haven't played that game, basically imagine you're this little dude, right? And uh, the story was pretty cool. You know, I don't really remember what the story was. You're in space, and and uh, but you have an objective. You know, you go from one side of the ship to the other. But you're in this you're this little guy, like you're a human dude. But you get into this massive like imagine. A uh, person hopping into Optimus Prime and like controlling him, you know what I mean? But there's seven, uh, yeah. But um, you know, but there was like, I think there was like six different suits that you could potentially jump in, yeah. And you're this little guy, so you have these objectives where you're, you know, you're blowing stuff up, you're, you're, you know, fighting all these other robots off and these other little dudes, and um, you know, there's certain parts where you have to hop out of the suit and go into these little passageways because only the human guy can get there. And as you're going around, you, you find these other suits, you know, that you can jump in. And each suit had its own ability. One had like a laser sword and a shield that could fly. One one was like super tank and had a flamethrower that was super massive and like big missiles Whoa, and stuff. And it actually could create like platforms to walk on and stuff like that, but really couldn't jump or anything like that. And then there's another guy you could turn into a ball and like roll around and was a little bit faster, but less attack power. One had like an electric whip. It was pretty insane. It was pretty cool. Um, and I just imagine like if you remade that today and then you incorporated more of like the human aspect, like the little dude, all he really did was get from A to B in the like the little sewages and pipes and all that stuff. And then you had to hop into a another, uh, yeah. And then you had to hop into another, you know, another, robot yeah, as soon as possible because you only had 10, like if you got hit by anything it was like you had a, a 10 life count like once you got to one you were done and it was easy to die but it was super fun <laughs> it was super fun you know i just imagine like if you just made a story like imagine you know i, I kind of picture it in like a halo fashion like as you're a human you're a little halo because you got a little gun or whatever but you're super weak you ain't got you're a human you know you got all these tanks and robots running at you and stuff like that so you got to be sneaky right so you can do it like a little splinter cell action you know, to where you get from one robot suit to the other and they're looking for you, right? They all know you're on the ship, you know? And then yeah. you get on the ship and then there's a lot more That's controls to it, you know? And shoot, like... We it should, would make you have to really be a good player. I mean, imagine if we did that to virtual reality, killed. too. You know oh what I mean? Oh, my God. Like, to where, like, you're you in get, the suit you and you have to press suit. things and, like, make sure that, you know, to activate your laser sword or the flamethrower or the gun. It just... Uh, I just can see it, see it going... You should you should play Titanfall. Titanfall. Have you heard of that I haven't game? seen that one. No, I've heard it, but I haven't seen it. No. Yeah, that game's, it's, it's kind of like on the way to what you're envisioning. You know? Really? Yeah, because like the, there's these huge like freaking robots things, and there's like a pilot, and you play as like the pilot. And it has like multiplayer. You know, it's like first person shooter, and you play as the pilot, and you can jump. You can like get launched out of the. They call them Titans. These big old robots. You get launched out. And you have a gun, and they, people run around like on multiplayer, and they're shooting people as guns, and they'll get back in their Titan, and then they'll fight other people's Titans and crap, and they have like flame floors and stuff. But yeah, no, it's freaking. That's that that's that's, cool. that's exactly what I was thinking. You could be you. cheap and shoot them as a little person. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Oh god, I love no rules. That's so <laughs> so cheap.
Yeah, no, that game. That's a. Um, you're saying that. That's exactly what I was envisioning. But yeah, no, there's a the, like the like the rolling ball thing and stuff like that. That'd be kind of something. Maybe Timefall three because I know they made two. So cool, man. Well, shoot. Then the last last question about our retro games is all right. So this one is definitely gonna cause some uh, conflicts. But uh, you know, just leave a comment on what you believe is the best system. Uh, that has the best retro game library and explain yourself you know leave a comment let us know what your opinion is we're going to share ours we're going to start with ian wow okay man this is like because you guys brought up like um you guys ever played like the nintendo ds too yeah oh yeah yeah that, I was big on that, oh, like yeah. the Pokemon games and the freaking. They even had a, uh, they even had like a, a Kingdom Hearts game that I was really into on the DS. Was mm -hmm. it the Chain of Memory? Chain of Memory. Well, it was originally on the Game Boy, and then they ported it. Yeah, it was awesome. The DS. Dude, it's just like freaking. In, I don't know. Nintendo's, Nintendo's been around for a long time. It seems you know, and they're pretty successful today, and just, man. In no, honestly, like if they wouldn't butt. have, if they wouldn't have came up with that switch, they'd be done for. Like, because yeah. the Wii was great, but then it, nobody was talking about it. Sure. You know, it didn't make it didn't make history. Dude, with that. I love Nintendo as much as the next person. They're like Willy Wonka. <laughs> they really off and they're all over the world. They're doing something no one else is talking about doing. I mean, when they're not playing it safe, they're making a handheld console. And all the play, all this um, PS, basically PlayStation does is make a better, a faster, better console. Uh, Xbox does the thing, but same thing. And then there's Willy Wonka. They're like, oh, we're gonna. You, you guys are making better computer. We'll make a handheld one. <laughs> they, what, what, have you ever heard the Largo, the one where they had the little building blocks? It's made out of cardboard. It's weird. You get like pulleys and stuff, and you're like this little thing making a robot. They're, it's wacky. I mean, it's. I'm like, I kind of wanted to get it, but <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something you would. Yeah, enjoy. but sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Ian. I just had to point that out. No, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I um. There's Nintendo. I don't know. Like I said, like I said earlier, I, like the retro gaming. I don't know if I'm the best person to ask, but dang, I just see, I just hear a lot of Nintendo. Well, to be honest, I love that about our group, though. Like, you, we can bring up any subject, and we get a different perspective from each person. You know what I mean? So the fact that you feel like you're not the best person to ask, no, you're the best person to ask for the person that's not the best person to ask that's listening to this right now. <laughs> nice. So shouts out to whoever that is. <laughs> Shout out to all my non-retro gamers right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. But you guys, I mean, like when you're a little kid, there's like you get out of it eventually. You it passes that point. You're not into it. It's I hate to say money is a lot of it too. You don't have enough money. You have a couple games. You get older. You're like, I don't know or. You're just not fucking good at it, man. Mm -hmm. That keeps me out of a lot of stuff. I was like, that's why I always bring up my brother. He would just stop me. I'm like, no, nah, this isn't fun. <laughs> me getting owned by you is not is not fun. Now that I'm a little bit better at it, I like to put the. Ah, that's another. There should be another question. Who do you want to put the boots to that you used <laughs> to get your get your ass hat into you? I mean, you were talking like no mercy. My brother, I did it to him. I got 25 out of 25 headshots in Halo. I mean, I told him my power was working through me. I never did that good. It's like when I got the uh, 300 game and Wii Bowling. I never did that good before. I didn't. I, there's no modesty in me. I was like, Pfft. I'm like, I don't even know how I did it. Oh, God, it was good. That last one, I thought I was going to get you, but I did. <laughs> kind of like your real life bowling. So, so Ian, <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm getting, though, just before we pass this over to Terrell. Um, so, Nintendo DS, is that the system you're... you're, you're uh, that's cool. I love that answer. I love the that answer. Dogs. Oh, the, the the DS dogs where you pet them with the little stylus. <laughs> that's that's more Ian's speed. But but you know, I... taking good care of uh, mittens or whatever. <laughs> mittens. You named a dog. Is it a dog? You, could you have cats? You on can, the... you. Cr I don't know if you create the dog, but like you <laughs> adopt the dog, and you basically have to feed Select it, breed. walk it, play with it on this little Nintendo DS. You know, it's what like I'm a saying? chia pet. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but just dogs, right? That's mm. limiting. You can, have cats. you can play Zoo Tycoon if you want to get you know to that spectrum. I bet that gets. I bet that gets weird. That's a little too much investment. Hey, I played Zoo Tycoon. Okay, I used to play that when I was a kid. That was the yeah, only game I had. Yeah, we used to play Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I still awesome. have that somewhere. Yeah, that game is awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
You guys remember that when, when people would leave a bad review on your roller coaster? You'd be like, that shit's gold. <laughs> I would pick them up and take them to the, the beginning of the park so they could leave. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> anyway, Terrell, go ahead. I don't even know I was going to say that. The retro gaming also covers PCs, too. There's like some yeah. seriously old. I have Prince of Persia. Mine's I play that on the Mac. Cool. I love that. Yeah. But, but which system do you believe has the best retro, retro game library? library? Dude, honestly, I gotta think the Game Boy Advance. I played a lot of Game Boy. That like, is a huge. Do and it's so fun. They like they, they know where it's at. Like Mr. Driller, yeah, simple I love that game. game. It's fun as hell. You you simple. You're just a little dude. You drill as fast as possible. It's like Tetris and drilling all in the same thing. It's got bright colors. And it's Japanese. What else? I mean, and it's got music. That, that, that epic, uh, like, bouncy Japanese music. What what was that Final Fantasy game that you helped me figure out that I was looking for? It was on the Game Boy. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody listening to this knows what I'm talking about, but you, like, get trapped in this book, and you have to make friends with, like, mages and all that stuff and go on these quests. That game was probably my favorite thing on the Game Boy. You know what I mean? And number two would probably be, of course, Fire Red or Leaf Green. Uh, hold on. Yeah. yeah. The Console Game Boy Red. Advance did have awesome games. There's about almost 2,000 games for it. I've looked it up. I mean, they covered... That's, I, I, oh, I played... I had about a... I had a good collection of games. I played freaking this... Game, they had a game for translating stuff, like to teach you Japanese. Like, who's learning Japanese on their Game Boy Advance? Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Nintendo, by the way. Nintendo made that. <laughs> yeah, they did. I mean, that thing has been, these things were rock hard as far as. There was a guy, he got bombed in one of the Desert Storms, but his Game Boy Advance still made it out. <laughs> or the original Game Boy. That's how rugged those things were. Oh, a, Willy Wonka doing his job. <laughs> Dude, there's a guy that simulated a computer, actually simulated a computer with him. He linked to like four or five hundred of them together, and since they're all individual platforms, he was able to like do machine learning. I'm just saying, this is making Ian's answer of Nintendo DS look better, because not only could the Nintendo DS do its own thing, it could play every Game Boy game. Yeah, that's true. Dude, the oh silos. man, I would always lose those things though, the Game Boys. <laughs> yeah. oh, Why do they not gosh, make them I'm attached like to it? It should have been magnetic. But I never. This, when you have exactly. anything you can take fridge off, or something, you can. <laughs> I look at the fridge. Yeah, it. I look at the fridge every day. You know, so like I would. Oh, you coming to get like a some? You coming to make a sandwich? You're getting the mayo, and you're like, oh, there's there Yoshi's Island. Yeah, no, I'd still forget it was there. You know. Wasn't there a 3D one that you could switch a little switch on it? It would go from 2D to 3D. One of the Nintendos. That that ended up making people the sick. DS? But yeah. But I was just like, God dang, Nintendo, you're always pushing it. It's like, it's just like they're inside of my head. They're like, this is cool. That's, can you imagine working there? So what's yours, Alex? My favorite game library? The PS1. You know, they got Final Fantasy VII. They had freaking uh, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. You remember the, there's that one game, it was like, you play as a squirrel, he's always smoking a cigar, and he's like cussing, and like, he's at, <laughs> The, I know exactly yes, what you're talking it's, about, dude. It's gory, dude. Yeah. And, like, the first mission, Who's you, like, show up on, like, the beaches of Normandy, and people, other squirrel people are getting blown up next to you. Hey, it's freaking leave crazy. Leave in the comment section what that game is, because I, I think it was Kronk. I think his name, I'm going I'm to look this up. I think yeah. his name Kronk is in, like, the character from Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. Dude, some silly, like, that. It was guys. great, though. I love that game. I think it might be Kronk. That's also another reason why I like the PlayStation 1, because it had more mature set of games to play on it. The yeah. games weren't like, because you know, you know Nintendo, you got Mario and Zelda and all that stuff. Zelda was a little bit more mature than Mario, they, obviously. I know they have mature games, but that's not their thing. It really isn't. I always felt like you had to look for it. Yeah, definitely with Nintendo, it was more family-based. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with the PlayStation 1, you have a lot more games that were set for a more like a like, like a adult, show. yeah and it's just audience. the better diversity straight up it, it i think every way playstation yeah. beats the others <laughs> it's more it's it's got a little nintendo oh on my it, gosh. And it's got a little it's got Can a little bit better out? than the xbox yeah. they really do it's have freaking something it's for everyone conquer conquer's bad for a day i knew it dude i was conceiving <laughs> in my head it's like, read, this, read this, read this. It says, The game follows the story of Conquer the Squirrel, a greedy, heavy drinking red squirrel. What? <laughs> I can't believe like my, my parents let me play this. Dude, like, what? The, look at it. Features graphic violence, alcohol, and tobacco use, vulgar humor, profanity. Dude, 
Yeah, and I was freaking just sitting in front of my TV like eight years is old. Is it a ma- is it rated mature? Yeah, yeah it's it M, dude. It's oh, it was a, there's a Nintendo game. It was a Nintendo game. I saw. <laughs> See, I there's saw one of those gems. Dude, Nintendo 64, baby. Oh my I gosh. I was, like, yeah. I was saying like you guys like all the vulgar stuff. And as a kid, it never really sunk in. Like I watched horror movies, and I never was like. I never was like, it only until I got older, they're like, oh yeah, this is screwed up. When I was a kid, I just accepted it. I'm like, all right. Well, no, I, I guess I was a pretty deep thinker as a kid, but I realized when I was playing Resident Evil and the zombies were eating people, that those people were dying. <laughs> like, I understood that. <laughs> My son does not. My son, I'm telling you, man, he comes up with the most morbid ideas, and I'm just like, you know, I have to understand that you don't really think that way, and you think it's funny, and that it's like, oh, it's a, it's a game. But in real life, I kind of feel like he'd be mortified. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like he, he says these things, like it's funny and all, but I think the humanity, I think we're able to separate humanity in, in a video game or in, you know, some of us can, some of us can't. Like for me and Alex, and, and I don't know about anybody else, but when I watch something, sometimes it hits me and I'm just like, dude, if that really happened, I'd feel bad. You know? I'm always thinking about what would, like, what would I do in that particular person's shoes? Mm. I like, cried an old yeller. That movie uh, still <laughs> Way to open up that <laughs> statement. I cried. How old were you again? I don't know. I still, the movie still <laughs> said it kills his dog, man. I mean, he he does kill it. It's not killed by someone else. He has to go out and shoot it. That is metal. The guy, the dad could have done him solid. He could be like, nah, son, you can go in here. I'll, I'll take care of him. He's, he's suffering. He won't suffer anymore. No. Here's the gun. You go shoot the thing. I mean, talk about the mist, bro. Oh, that movie made me so upset. Twitching and shit, they're like, no. (laughs) And then the fucking military rolls up after he shot everyone. And I'm just like, at that point, I'd be like, don't save me, just fucking shoot me, please. Shoot me because I have no bullets left because I shot everyone else. Oh the mi- oh yeah, God. I would be like, kind of like, oh, they were dead when I got here. <laughs> just, I just found the car. <laughs> I just found the car and got in because I was scared and these dead bodies were in wow. here. You can't prove anything. I didn't question. These bodies look kind of fresh, sir. Feel it back in. There was a lot of games for the PS1 that I really enjoyed that were also not mature rated too, you know, because you yeah. could think like I'm some kind of psychopath or something because I like a mature rated game, but... Well, well, no, which, which, which one did you like that wasn't mature? mature? I mean, Final Fantasy VII, sure, but... Well, Final Fantasy VII I would still consider yeah. a mature game, but... Uh, Crash Bandicoot yeah. and Spyro. Those yeah. are the two that I remember for. Spyro, for sure. Wow. Cool. Spyro. That's awesome. Or, you guys Those remember... Those uh, hard, too. Yes. You guys remember Sly Cooper? Yeah. No. Is that PS1 or PS2? I can't... I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. game I just thought of, I love Tenchu. It's for the PlayStation. Oh, Tenchu, yes. It's everything I'm not. Coordinated and quiet. <laughs> That's like, have you played Tenchu? It's that game where you play as like a, an assassin, like a ninja. Tenchu's a great game, though. I agree. Once again, that's also a mature-rated game, too, though. Yeah. Yeah, we were just growing up playing some freaking... Some it never stuff. phased me. I never thought about it. My I mean, parents didn't quite... Like, like they, they bought me the game. game. Yeah, they yeah. They bought me. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, they, they didn't look at it and be like, oh, no, that's, that's exactly why the argument that, like, oh, video games are bad, bad like, they're no, basically no. making people violent. I'm like, if you're an adult and you pl- and you watch a movie that's violent and you can't tell the difference, like, you should be able to tell the difference between reality and what's in a movie. It's the same with a video game. Just be like, oh, that's hor-. like, oh, that's horrible. That's awesome. It's happened. That person in the movie just slapped him upside head. That's real life. What does that feel like? You don't lie, do you? That's what I'm told. Like, mom, can you slap me? I don't know what's really. Yeah, I've been on the PlayStation bandwagon from the beginning. I had a PlayStation one, two, three, four. I have the four now. And when the five comes out, I'm sure I'll get it a couple years after. When it's no longer new. <laughs> I was a I was a homie hopper, man. I went from <laughs> PlayStation to Xbox, back to PlayStation, back to Xbox, and I have both. You're just like me. Yeah. As soon as some better, I have a PC now too. As yeah. soon as they came out to be better, that's what all of them did succeed. The the Nintendo was the creme de la creme at the beginning. Atari was before that, and then the and Nintendo sixty four got a little long in the tooth. Like, nah, what's this PlayStation? And it had better games. And the PlayStation got a little old. I'm like, what's this Xbox? And I got that and had Halo. 
And then Halo, I'm like, you're hey. like a cheating girlfriend. Hey, Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo's making a comeback though. I gotta say because a lot of my friends are asking, like, hey, you got a Switch? Oh man, you got this game? Oh, it's on the Switch. Like, People the Switch are playing Animal right Crossing all oh, over dude. everywhere. Oh, dude, Animal Crossing is so fun, man. I got it on the GameCube right now, and we're talking about it on the Switch. <laughs> dude, if they ever make a high def system, I'm switching. You think so? Yeah. They, they, they would I'm just waiting make for Breath so of the Wild too. I don't even have a Switch, but I still want to play. <laughs> It looks cool. That Anybody got a Switch I can borrow to record with? <laughs> just, just putting it out just there. Just putting it out there. Well, hey, I wanted to just wrap up with my my opinion on the best library for retro gaming. It's just something that's close to my heart. I'm not gonna just I'm not just gonna sit here and argue that it is the best. But for me, the GameCube definitely was a big part of my life. I mean, I, I got a GameCube right now. I'm teaching my son how to play the GameCube. Like my game, my son doesn't have a PS4. He doesn't have an Xbox or nothing like that. He's got a GameCube. All right, I'm starting him off how I started. That's good. That's you know good. What I mean? That's solid. And, uh, but I just got, you know, just a shout out to a couple of games, man. Sonic Adventures 2. I mean, where you're not in the left to right realm anymore. You're actually moving around 3D. Still got the same concept of gathering coins. But now you got this uh, child aspect to it where you're raising these things called chow. You can make, there's so many varieties of how you can raise it. And then you, it's shoes, got a great man. story, great action to it, where you're feeding robots. <laughs> but for me, I mean, obviously you got the or or Karina of Time, which my sister already, you know, pointed out, you know. But they put that on the GameCube with the what was the Master, Master Quest? Quest? Oh yeah. man, the difficult one. Yeah. I mean, oh, it was so great. And then my favorite one, and I think it's because I don't know why I'm just biased, but the Star Fox Adventures. If anybody has not played that game that likes the GameCube, you got to play that game. It's the one Star Fox game that I know of where you're not just flying in space, dodging bullets and shooting other spaceships. Like it had such a great plot. He's saving this planet of dinosaurs from it, like basically destroying that could have happened for us if only we had a Star Fox, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then nice. of course, top it all off. I mean, we just I mean, my she sister, my sister can can attest to this, but there were so many hours of Mario Good thing Party. Mike wasn't close to you. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mario Party, Mario was definitely... Party, Super Smash Bros, the original. You know, yeah. it was just an amazing. I remember console. we used to think in Smash Brothers that there was a character that was still available that we. Could oh my get. gosh! Yeah, we we. I mean, we is put so. All right, this is before be... this no. is before you no, could it buy didn't the book. Exist. Mm -hmm. This is before you could buy the book. And actually find out how you got all the characters. We played that game so much. I think the only character we had to look up how to get, which my mom did, was Mr. Game & Watch. Yeah. We got every other character just by playing it. Just by playing it for hundreds of hours. I mean, you know, we'll get into our story a little bit. But, you know, growing up as kids, we were just left in the living room while our parents just stayed in the back room. And we just, if it, we weren't outside, we were inside playing the GameCube. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was just, mm -hmm. that's why, that's my bias. But, yeah, so... Our next topic of today, we're going to talk about some jobs. You know, we all got one, or some of us don't. And uh, we're going to cover that today, currently. too, a little later. I never so, knew what furloughed meant. Yeah, yeah I, didn't I mean got furloughed. Either. Yeah. And we're going to get into that later, too. But for now, I'm going to ask specifically um, Alex and Ian this question. Mm -hmm. um, we'll start off with Alex, but uh, what is something you would tell someone coming into the workforce, like fresh out of high school or maybe just trying to help out the house at 16 or trying to save up some money, just start now. What's some advice you'd give? I would say try to learn as much as possible. Ask a lot of questions. I have encountered a lot of people who have worked at the same job for 10 years that do not know how to, anything works, that don't know how to do their job beyond the very bare minimum they're willing of effort they're willing to put in. Yeah. And these people got paid more than me, which is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I literally became in charge of a room in the first year of working somewhere because I asked them, because I wanted to understand how to do something. Mm -hmm. Right. And all you got to do is ask questions. Like, it's not something... I know some people might be, like, embarrassed to, you know, ask questions because they think it might make them look like they didn't know anything, but... The more questions you ask, the more you will learn and the better you'll get at your job. That sounds great. You know, what about you, Ian? I think it's important to have goals set in mind, you know, because um, I, I think it's really easy. Like if you're working a job and you're getting all this money, you don't really have anything you're saving it up for to spend it. It's easier to spend it. And um, oh, yeah. so just writing that, it's like, especially if you're in high school, because in high school, you know, we all remember like 
just wondering, having so many questions about like our future and like where we're gonna go and stuff like that. I still question. Where my you know future. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But just having simple goals and like, like if you want a car, like saving up towards a car, just kind of learning that discipline early on is really nice. And you know, um, starting, you don't have to wait until you get out of high school. You can start like, hey, like because we got the summers, you know. Like I know a couple people that lifeguarded in the summers, which is kind of nice. You know, it's a it's an easy job. I mean, it's very important, but um, you're around a bunch of people your age that are either in high school or out of high school. You're having a lot of fun, get to know a lot of people, and uh, get a nice tan. So, um, <laughs> well, nice tan. Yeah, nice tan. <laughs> I'm getting there, man. You'll hit puberty eventually. <laughs> I've been in, I've had I've been in puberty for like half my life now. It seems. <laughs> But no, puberty. Getting out of high school, oh man, I remember just being so worried. Cause I I started working when I was in high school. I worked at Pizza Hut, but I didn't work over the summer. I worked like while I was still in school, and I remember just spending it so foolishly because I didn't really have anything to save up for. It's just like, oh, you know, what I did. As soon as I turned eighteen, I started going to raves. I went to a lot of raves. Sounds fun. It doesn't sound like food. It was fun, but I mean, you once you do once, once you go to like one or two graves, you kind of get the gist of it, you know. But we went oh, to a lot. Tons of fun. What a horrible. God, you wasted your life. <laughs> you could have more things. There still are good things. You still enjoy it. Like, I swear yeah. to God, like I burn holes in my pockets. Like I don't. Like my money just goes in and out immediately because I'm just like there's so much shit. And I'm just like, oh, that's so cool. And then my money's just gone. It just flies away. <laughs> have you ever met the people that don't do anything? I know my, some of my friends are the people that, that they didn't go to the raves. Yeah. They're like, oh, oh my gosh, the girl You know, you don't, <laughs> don't want to be that guy either. <laughs> that's cool. Hey, um, Tara, we got a question specifically for you. And we would have given it to our buddy Seth. Where did you go from? Okay, cool. Well, well that's sad. Here's 41. Um, uh, but... <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, you know, we want to we want to give this over to Terrell, and just to preface this, Terrell, I kind of want to uh, talk for Seth. First off, um, Seth, who was supposed to join us today, um, do your homework next time. <laughs> you, then you can come come on the yeah, podcast for real. with us. You know? What in the world, man? <laughs> uh, but uh, anywho, get Terrell, a job um, too. Yeah, Terrell, <laughs> do you do you think? And like, I want you to preface this real quick before this. But do you think? not being in the workforce influences how you look at money and just to preface this i don't want anybody thinking you're a 41 year old loser or nothing but uh i want you to explain like what if you are comfortable with it like why why you're not in the workforce um i got well i've 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 had a learning disability my entire life and my mother got me on uh Disability. Disability when I was quite young, like in 17, something like that. So I've never had a job. By the way, for people that say that that's awesome, if you had to live on this money alone, no parents, nothing, you would live in poverty and there would be a lot of locks on your door and you'd be living by crackheads. So it wouldn't be this glamorous life of carefree and no, it'd be a lot of top ramen. But <laughs> as never had, any, had a job, had, had not even a word, uh, had a job, um, no, I don't think you. I think you inherently don't appreciate it. I'll even. I'm humble. I don't appreciate it as much as somebody that had to work for it all their life. I'm not gonna lie to myself. So no, I don't think you do. It's just like not. A, I thought what I knew what it was like to have a girlfriend. That's a job. Anyway, <laughs> you know, getting overtime. You get, you, get, you get like a lot of critiques on your performance. You know, performance just, reviews every day. Yeah. <laughs> comments but you know yeah it is it does change your view of the world you you're you're the microcosm for what you look through on how things are your life experiences a lot of people's life is six the people that meet are from their jobs I, that's how i met you know someone like how i met my girlfriend or I met my she met two boyfriends like uh you met one boyfriend at your job that's a shade your experience you've probably met significant others at jobs i mean that's basically your life where you hang out after high school that's where you get the random assortment of people that you spend time with. It's a major, major avenue of meeting people is jobs. And that being devoid of that, yes, it does affect your life. Thank you, Thank you Tara, for sharing that with us. Um, thank you for your level of Starbucks, baby. Um, you know, uh, last question, I'll start off with this one. But um, question is, what's, 
our opinion slash experience on customer service, like the expectations when they make mistakes and level of professionality that is um, expected, right? Um, so one thought that we had before we started this podcast was, you know, um, that we have people in our lives that seem to critique, um, you know, servers at restaurants, um, you know, very, uh, like, they hold them to a very high standard and it's very aggressive. Like, like we're, we're talking, talking like, like okay, okay, you get mad, mad that the biscuits, biscuits are too small, but it's not the server's fault that the owner of the company makes the size of the biscuits. <laughs> but you think it's appropriate to yell at the server who just brings Hopefully you the biscuits? Hopefully she never listens to this podcast. <laughs> yeah. 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 At least this episode. Um, but I'm just, I'm just being a little blunt here. But, you know, um, for me, my, my opinion is experience on customer. Well, I used to actually be a server um, for a little over a year. And... Um, you know, I, I didn't think it was a bad job. Um, I thought it was pretty easy to keep people happy, you know, keep their cups filled, uh, make sure you ask them how their food was, if there's anything I can do for them to either help or change that I will or could. And it was, it was pretty, people were pretty understandable from that point. But uh, going with the question on my own opinion on it is when I eat somewhere, I kind of put myself in the server shoes. Like if my steak comes back and I ordered a medium rare and it's burnt, you know, I understand that's not the server's fault. You know what I mean? However, I am going to ask that they take the steak back. Now, I don't know. I know a lot of people listening to this are going to understand that, like, sometimes people got a little attitude. You know what I mean? Now, you know, now, if I'm nice and I'm just asking for them to remake my steak and I explain why, and then you got to get the manager involved in this, this whole situation, which we've all got those stories, right? Um, let's just say it comes out in the tip. <laughs> you know? uh, so for me, it's like, be nice. nice. If, if you're nice, nice, if you're kind, and you know, I'm okay with you making mistakes. As far as professionality goes, um, you know, I don't. I think as long as you know you're dressed appropriately and um, represent the company and yourself well, I think it's totally fine. Now, if you're flaunting yourself, like like sometimes um, when you go to like Buffalo Wild Wings and your bars, that server's trying to get that twenty dollar tip from you. That's a turnoff for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so that's just my opinion, service. You know, like I just put myself in their shoes and. I've, I've had, had stellar, stellar service, service and I, I tip accordingly. accordingly. Like, like you guys, guys might think I'm crazy, crazy but I've tipped 70 bucks before just because, because the service was great. And, you know, I was out with a uh, very fresh, fresh relationship girlfriend trying to impress him. You know, I got a big <laughs> ego. But <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll pass this over to Tara now. Uh, what's mine? I basically <laughs> believe I'm not making it for myself unless they horribly screw it up. I'm not going to complain. I just don't like that dude. I don't like meeting him, so I try not to be that guy. I'm like, hey, thanks for making me the food. I try to say a little ditty. I'm trying to be funny. You know, I just try to be personal. And if they mess it up, I'm like, eh, that's first world problems. I'm sorry my $5 coffee drink wasn't exactly to my liking. I have bigger problems in the world. Right. You know, so I just try not to sweat it because it just doesn't really matter, to be honest. When's the one time you have sweated it, though? Um... When I don't believe them, when they're kind of like, you know, I'm not asking a lot, you know, when people are just kind of, you know, we're like, uh, hey, man, you no, I actually ate some food. It was, it was swill. I mean, it was bad. I tried to I tried to st chow through it. It was this rice bowl from this fast food place. It was crunchy and, and goopy. It was horribly <laughs> fucked up. They didn't just, <laughs> just kind of mess it up. It was like, how do you screw up something you can just put in a microwave? You know, just like that fucking mac and cheese, the defective box of mac and cheese that I made. Ooh, I have nightmares properly. about that. That was I tried to eat it, too. Oh, it, was, it was bad. I would love to know the chemical that broke down that made that bad. It was just like my... It was like a lie. You're like you felt like it's like like you like you ate fake food in an art project. You're like, wait a minute, that's not a real hamburger. Oh yeah, the little macaroni you'd put on the paper. You know? Yeah, <laughs> your little brother would eat it when you got home. Like, no, 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 it's got glue on it. Oh, he's just chowing down. You don't care. <laughs> Is that the story? Like your brother? Did that happen to you? Sounds a little. No, Maybe no, we ask Seth no, that no, no, guys, guys, I. Actually, Actually, that was me, me in the story. story. Oh, you're the one that ate the macaroni. Weird I'm sorry. I'm sorry to my sister that I ruined your art project. <laughs> At the time, the mac and cheese looked really good. <laughs> Did it have cheese or something? No, it's just a piece of noodle. I'm not. I'm just picturing. I'm like, are you eating glue too? Because you're, I was a kid, so I, they looked like mac and cheese. So I just was like, yeah. 
Boom. It's got a little, oh. little flavor on it. That's what the glue is. It's made out of milk. It's like dairy, isn't it? Or you know what? I've yeah, I mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is our friends made of. I know he didn't. It's not toxic because he ate the shit and didn't die. You know, I mean, I can't talk. I ate entire half of a plate. Like, like a I was eating a of glued mac and cheese. No, no, he was mac and cheese. He was eating a uh, calzone, I think. He yeah, said. and I had it on one of those, you know, paper plates. And I was eating it, and I eating it, and that's a while. I'm like, damn, this shit is chewy. And they had him eating half the plate. I'm like, oh, boy, whatever. Oh man. So we all do weird shit that you know. You're like, oh, I know. I do. I do weird shit too. Like. Sometimes, sometimes I like I end, I end up putting stuff in like the most bizarre places like sometimes like the remote for the TV ended up inside of the freezer oh yeah <laughs> and I'm like I don't know how I got there like I must have been going to get something and then I just I don't know. at some point though you just gotta accept it you know what I mean like yeah, eating plates strange. you know <laughs> just like oh, I just laugh it off that's not every I love them my best favorite stories is where I completely let another screw it up like where I had this idea of what I was gonna do and that did not happen <laughs> You know, you're like, yeah, no, I'm gonna kick his ass. That's, That's not, not what happened. happened. <laughs> he, I got he, my ass kicked. Yes, I'm like, a fight technically is when you hit the other person. I've been beat up. I haven't fought someone. That's that's a little. It wasn't a fight. It was a slaughter. <laughs> 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 so bad. Uh, oh my anyway, but uh, you know, um, you know, now that we're gonna get on this subject, just to prep a little bit, you know, uh, Ian did mention about people being for load and and I think we're all in that kind of situation right now or most of us listening that's for sure um, so we're gonna talk about COVID-19 or the coronavirus um, Alex I kind of want you to start us off but the first question is you know do you think the coronavirus or COVID-19 is being handled well in comparison to other diseases that we might have might have had I mean this is honestly a modern-day plague right but um, how do you think it's being handled Alex I'm kind of in the middle on that. I think it could have been, like, handled better because there's a lot of other countries, like South Korea specifically, that handled it well because they were already dealt with, like, SARS and, like, other plagues that had happened before that. So they already had, like, a predetermined response to it, which the U.S. didn't have because for the first, like, month, they all thought it was bullshit. So... <laughs> Which is not the way you're supposed to react to a plague that's happening in other countries. You just don't assume. Oh, you mean the yeah. You just oh, don't assume. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I remember. It, it, it was such a weird feeling, just like hearing about it, like in Europe, happening in Europe, and people were like already going inside, and you're just sitting there at work, like it ain't real. I mean, well, yeah. it's not happening here. <laughs> yeah, it's very. I'm American. just like not the correct <laughs> response at all. And that's what everybody was thinking. It's just like, you know. That's not what I was thinking. I was watching stuff about the coronavirus before it got here. Like the stuff happening in China. Like people were dropping dead in the streets in China. Jeez. And I'm just like, that is something serious. If it gets over here, it's going to be serious. But and then you had other people that are just like, it's a hoax. All the time while she had pneumonia from not doing anything. Yeah. So she I had, had pneumonia. I had her. pneumonia. I was stuck inside. <laughs> And then, like, I got better, and immediately the coronavirus hit, and now I still can't go outside. So weak. So weak. <laughs> She's sitting there terrorized with fear. <laughs> when I have pneumonia already. All right, what about you, Ian? What do you think, brother? Oh, man. I just keep waking up with more money in my bank account. <laughs> nice and humble. Nice and humble, yeah. It's just crazy. But um, I'm like I'm all over here with like oh, I had pneumonia man, for like my... months, <laughs> couldn't fight it off, <laughs> and then like I'm like if I get the coronavirus, which is essentially like my pneumonia, I'm like I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> Ian's like making that bank, <laughs> dude. I, I, if it was handled well, I mean it just. Uh, oh, man, I think if I don't know. took it seriously, it could have been handled better, but we didn't know. Like we I'll admit I didn't take it very seriously. I was like I said, I was just still at work. I was sitting there at work and I was, you know, supervising the lifeguards and there was just less people in the pool. I was like, Oh wow, well this kinda sucks. And then we got sh dude, the day we got shut down was like pretty pretty funny too because 
somebody I guess funny. called somebody called the resort. Uh, I'm not gonna name the resort, but so he called the resort and said, "Hey, your pool's still open, or their pool's still open." They called, no, they didn't call the resort. They called the governor's office, and they called all these pe- different people, and then they came and shut us down. Yeah, I was like, "Oh wow." So, and now I'm at home. <laughs> Mine wasn't any different. I was already at home, stuck inside anyway. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, just went from being inside to being inside. <laughs> a whole lot of nothing changed. You know what? I always picture my friend Tommy's thing where he, he has the shutters and he goes, he's like going, you're making them go down. That's what I picture. Alice. She's like, you're looking outside. She's like, nope. <laughs> Lowers the shutters even more. I have blackout curtains. So so it's like closes it's the door. Ah, uh, yes. I just hope it gets better. You know. I I mean I kind of miss going to work. It's kind of miss the routine. Otherwise, you stay up late, wake up late, and kind of feel like crap in the morning. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So. What about you, what about you Tara? What you think? Dude, I, you know I didn't sweat it because I'm like Alex. I I do spend a lot of time at the house, but there's times like it's like my dad described like smoking he could have eaten a cigarette there's times when i'm like i don't normally want to go out there's times i'm like dude i need to get out i need to do something that's not inside these four walls and you need to get away from these people <laughs> no i don't think i just want to do something you know because it just gets monotonous i just want to you know like you know like like when we used to when we hung out with you that little little semblance of something different makes a difference yeah even if it's not major it's still like something it's not what you're because i don't know what you're going to say Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Just that little change of the, I'm not in control of it. It's something different. I, I kind of need that at right, certain right. points. Well, that's kind of leading into our next uh, question is uh, what is your guys' standpoint? I'll just open it up whoever wants to talk about it. But what's your guys' standpoint on the precautionary measures that are being implemented? You know, Terrell just kind of talked about, you know, the stir craziness. But, you know, do you think it's... You know, do you think certain things about it are too extreme or not serious enough? Like, what's what do you get? What's your guys' standpoint on the precautionary measures? I think it should be a bit more strict. You know, like you were saying, if you're taking it seriously, it still it just seems like we got we're laid off. We're half-assing it. Yeah, we just we're got laid off. You know what I mean? And we're just getting paid extra. But otherwise, it's like you still go to people are still going to the grocery store. Everyone's at the park. You know, there's still I think there's still a lot of risks. Um, they're not doing 100% of the precaution that we were supposed to do. They're like, oh, the uh, the lockdown isn't working. I'm like, because there's so many people who aren't inside. Yeah, aren't still- locked down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if you want, like, the longer, like, the longer we're gonna be in here because people didn't actually 100% do the measures that, that we were supposed to take. Yeah, because they kind of half-assed it. I guess this is where I come in, but uh, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> taking the precaution measures seriously at all. And, um, yeah, like don't get me wrong. Like I'm keeping my distance. You know, you guys are family, so you know we're kind of going against the precautionary measures right now. None of us, I think, are six feet apart. You know what I mean? But uh, you know, this is a <laughs> this is a podcast, and honestly, we're all healthy, healthy young bucks. Yeah, if you ask me. <laughs> But um, for me, it's like, I think we're doing everything correctly um, as far as that goes. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people throwing parties. There are people, you know, um, being, um, let's see, uh, irresponsible. But for me, it's, for me, if people want to go outside and they want to bike, they want to walk, they want to go to the park still, as long as you're keeping your distance from people, man, you can't expect people to be inside. I mean, unless they, of course, do the mandate, you know, uh, do martial law where people cannot leave their house. Uh, which, uh, which I think I they'd have to give everybody a little warning so we could stock up on food. But yeah, that'd be I feel like everything's kind yeah. of, I think, I think people are, are t- like, like if you compare it to when, when this first started, how we were, to how everybody is now, it's, it's a drastic change. Like the fact that I can't hug people when I see them or give them a handshake, like that's weird to me because I shake everybody's hand. Like if I meet you, you're getting eye contact and a handshake, but now we're touching elbows or, or I don't even like touch you. Like we, I say hi from six feet away and people run away. Like, you know what I mean? Dude, that elbow, like, that elbow that thing's so weird too. Like, like at work, so we got this weird. thing where we're like clicking feet. You, can't, we're just you don't like, look cool at all. No. Doing freaking. Oh, come here. 
Yeah. yeah. No, so but, but for me, it's like, I don't, I don't live in fear. And this is just my opinion, right? And, and I'm not trying to lose any viewers on this or anything like that, but I believe in not living my life in fear. And uh, from what I've heard, read um, from doctors, uh, people that I very much trust that are successful or did have their doctorate degrees and their, their opinions on it, what the CDC has said, um, for a guy like me, 25 years old, um, I'm gonna be living my life with these precautionary measures, keeping my distance, but I'm still out jogging a mile or two miles a day. I'm still saying hi to people, I'm still going to the stores. You know, I don't even wear a mask most of the time because uh, to be honest, I think it makes people even more like weirded out um, if I wear a mask, but not only that, it's like the mask is only for you to spread it. Like for you, like the masks that prevent you from getting it are like 90 bucks, at least from what I heard, they're very expensive. Well, and even, so, a, even a basic, basic mask is better than nothing, though. Yeah, yeah. and I feel like, you know, for people that want to wear the mask, I'm not even putting them down. You know, I think it gives people a sense of, you know, calmness. I think if every but... person wore a mask, the spread would decrease a lot. Well, yeah, because it prevents you from spreading it. You know, yeah, it doesn't so prevent you from getting it. Just that's a preventive measure that we could have had, the, but we didn't have the supply of masks that we would have needed to implement that. <laughs> I'm going to throw this to um, Alex. Uh, I feel like she has the strongest opinion about it. But oh, do I? Do you believe we will be more prepared for future plagues because of our experience with the coronavirus? I definitely think so. I think that the, the lack of preparedness we had and the, the outcome that we not being prepared had during the coronavirus this time would make it to where it would be more of a priority for in case like uh, something more deadly than the coronavirus comes. Something with a higher death rate, somebody that will kill more people, will be better prepared for it to not spread to as many people, and we'll have measures in place to prevent the outcome that we have right now, to where everyone has to stay inside. And That might still happen, but I just don't think it would be to the same degree that we have it right now. I think the public will be more prepared, too, you know? Like, if they'll, they'll, they'll yeah, yeah, exactly, you know, because... It'll be more of like, instead of us looking to CDC for like what we should do and what we shouldn't do, we kind of already have an idea because we've already lived through it. Like That's of what exactly we should start doing even before they start announcing stuff. That's exactly what I said about South Korea already being prepared because they went through like SARS and other plagues before the coronavirus hit. They handled it way better because they already had dealt with a plague before. They also have a better culture. Like, no, I'm serious. Like, they always wore the mask. Now, Americans... Yeah, they wore them anyway because it, it's like Americans have a, kind of a stubborn streak. We're like, guns, I don't want to do what other people want. The Asians, their society, not the stereotypical, but it, it does run like a, through our nation. They have a, more of a conformist, like, you do what your parents want you to do. You do the, the bigger society knows better. We're more like, a lot of our problems do come from they're like, oh, I don't want to. Don't want to tell me what to do. And it's like, okay, that, that this isn't about what kind of food you can eat. This is the disease you can get, man. Mm. You're you're not gonna have a freedom to do shit. You're gonna be dead. Yeah. What do you What do you think, Ian? Um, if we'll be better prepared. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we'll definitely be better prepared. I know I will be, definitely. And if I can be, I think anybody can. So, I I like I think one thing I could have done better is to motivate my family a little better because my family is a um well the adults in my family they're like soothsayers you know they uh um don't really believe kind of like the american culture you're talking about like they don't really like to be told what to do so i think i could do a better job of motivating them or just kind of like showing them how because i mean what wearing a mask it doesn't intrude on your daily life you know what i mean it's just you put an extra article of clothing on and um like i know it's just kind of yeah it's just kind of like maybe like you're saying how asian culture like they're already taking they take those cautionary measures whether there's a play going around or not you know yeah and it just made me think i remember i went to the grocery store and i was like uh you know how they have now if you go to the grocery stores you, like, at least at smith's they have somebody at the front with a freaking spray bottle and a rag and they wipe down all the carts and stuff before they, you receive them, you know what I mean? And I feel like that that's already offered to us through the sanitizing wipes that are at the front, but maybe now people will like Actually take that more them. seriously, you know, even after this, because it should be a measure we should already take. I get it. No, for me, um, for me, I feel like there's also a level of constant fear that's going to be around. Like say when this 
because this isn't going to go straight back to normal right after like like i work in the casinos as well and you know it's uh it's a little weird um because like business people aren't going to start traveling right away tourism is going to be down um and for me it's like if we even smell a plague happen even like five years from now the people like us who've been through it and, and know we're what it's immediately like, gonna bunker we're down gonna, yeah and, and i don't really know if that's a good thing to be quite honest with you because i'm not gonna lie when when i wasn't taking this coronavirus as serious as i am today and i'm not even saying i'm taking it super serious but i wanted some toilet paper and water you know yeah. what i mean and like i would like i'm just normally shopping and all of a sudden one day i go and i can't get water or toilet paper for five days you know yeah that got a little bit out of hand yeah you know? so i was just like i feel like that could have been handled like, better you yeah know what i mean yeah that could have been handled i think the worst better. part about it is that they're trying to return all of that stuff oh no that's unacceptable yeah. it's like well i mean maybe they should but i don't know but like when you buy an insane amount of cases of wire like like it felt like they were just literally like oh no more customers can buy more than two cases of wire it's like why didn't you do that like in the beat like right when it started like, like if a dude rolls, rolls up, up with three shopping shop. carts full of waters you be like dude no like <laughs> you get like you can get up to like five maybe six but you got you got 20 cases of water right there man no you need to take two of those carts and take it back or just leave them on the side and we'll handle it you know but that was just ridiculous it's like dude i'm not even crazy i've even you know? seen videos of people who are like you're not leaving anything for anyone else and the lady's just like i don't care and she's just loading her truck up full of huge boxes of just nothing but toilet paper and sanitizer and stuff just get a brita ladies and gentlemen get a brita filter it's inexpensive <laughs> fill that sucker up every day filters the water get like three f i i got filters to last me like a year for like 12 bucks <laughs> No, it's true. Don't it's very true. Dude. I'm trying to hop on that Brita train, too. You know what I'm saying? Totally good, <laughs> I got those copper rusted pipes in my cheap apartment. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, but yeah, you know, for me, um, I think we'll definitely be more prepared. I think there'll be a level of fear to where, like, if something isn't as serious, which I think we're going to take everything seriously from here on out, um, it's just going to be like this roller coaster emotionally for to me, you know, because... Um, so you want to, like, like, like... like overreact now. Right. But yeah, I gotta tell you, I, I'm, so I'm very grateful for the coronavirus. I know some people might think that's weird to say, but I I picture so many people like seeing the kind of like hole everybody kind of got into because of the coronavirus for a while from everybody getting laid off. Like, I think the government did an amazing job. Like, stimulus checks, 1200 bucks for, you know, just to stimulate the economy. You know what I mean? Um, freaking. That's I, also another like, thing I think might improve the next time. Well, to be honest, I don't feel like they can do that too much. Like, imagine if this happens again in like within five years, I don't think we have the funds to do that. I mean, but to me, it's like, it's amazing that they can, but I literally, I wasn't prepared for the coronavirus. You know, I don't have a food storage system yeah. that is recommended to people, you know, to have with cans and rice and beans that you're supposed to gradually acquire and not go and buy it away for everybody else not to have, you know. Mm. But like, I didn't have that. My savings was crap, you know. Now I, now I feel like the, the, the reason I have so much gratitude is because like moving forward from my life, um, this level of fear or knowing the seriousness that this uh, this could happen and this is what we're supposed to prepare for, like, I ha I'm going to have a better savings. I'm going to have a better food storage system. You know, it's like, and I feel like that's worldwide. Like, people are going to, I think, take that seriously. Now, the people that aren't, I think, are the people that just are taking these stimulus checks for granted and are just seeing it as free money, not having that respect for it like, like Terrell talked about, you know? So, it's just... It's just awesome, me, but you know. So we're gonna end here with a nice, lighthearted topic, and uh, we apologize for all of our viewers that literally yeah. just don't want to hear none of that crap. We just thought it'd be appropriate to talk about because, you know, we're something you're, we're all dealing with. Yeah, we're all dealing with it. It's current, and uh, you're starting to envision what we look like. Now. Yeah, and we like to hear. We, we we believe that we all have our own perspective, and we're all individuals, and and we like to make light of it. You know what I mean? And yeah. Corona ain't got nothing on us. You know, we're gonna move forward. We're gonna get past this, but. Fourth topic today is about 2D animation. I know a lot of people listening, you know, have either watched cartoons or currently watch something 2D. Um, there's a lot of controversy. You know, I have my wife, love her to death, but she thinks that anybody who watches anything drawn 
is is acting childish or that it is childish and she can only connect with people that have the same nostalgia she'll have which is very biased on her side so first question and i'm going to throw this to terrell because he's a huge uh, marvel fan um, Marvel and DC. Yeah, Dude, yeah, just all of it. I mean, just send it for me for approval. Right. <laughs> so a side story, I'd watch it. So, so Tara, I'm gonna, gonna throw this one at you first. Are cartoons, anime, or any kind of 2D animation in general just for kids or childish? It is a medium like anything. It can be for whatever story you want to tell. To think, it, and originally, historically speaking, they were not for children. Betty Boop was never intended for children. It became for children. That's a, that's a, an American thing to think that it only is for kids. And you look at Japan, took it, and the art form represents every possible story that can be told, adult or otherwise. So no, categorically, I think it's a limiting and a silly way to see it. Yeah. All right, Ian, give us your perspective, brother. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> 2D animation can definitely get adult. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, there's some, there's some crazy. I was gonna say anime. There's some crazy anime out there that's just like the amount of gore is freaking ridiculous. <laughs> it's just two types of people in this world. <laughs> but it gets gory. It gets there's like. Really heavy. Oh, movies. really heavy. Yes. yes. Alex oh, talks about the ones that are actually legitimately sad. Like, yeah, yeah no. Like, oh, dude. Yeah, there's. It's the uh, range, man. There's this one I watched. It's called Darling, Darling in the Franks. Franks. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that one. That's yeah, pretty good. It's only like. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like 20. It's only like 20 episodes. It only has one season. But, like, midway through the season, there's just like one, one flashback episode. And every time I watch it, I ball. I ball. It's crazy. It's, it's a, a it's, it's a really, really good it's a really good episode, good episode. and, and I, I, I won't spoil it for anybody you know because it's a very it's it's it's, it's something you gotta see for yourself yeah yeah, yeah that, that and it's just it's it's a really key plot or plot point so but I'd recommend that but it, just just with two D animation just it, I that's actually interesting to hear that because I feel like I don't know what do you guys think do you guys think more adults watch anime now than children or vice versa. I feel, I feel like, like there's, there's definitely, definitely more animated content directed at adults than there is kids now. And I feel like it's kind of like video games today. Like the average video gamer um, is 37 years old, um, last I checked. And that's because video games started out so young. And for, so, so for people like like me that loved anime, shoot, ever since I was eight years old, I was watching Toonami and then it kind of evolved from there. But um, man, just like... As far as catering to adults, I feel like they just do a great job of just making good stuff. Like right now, you know, we got popular stuff like My Hero Academia. You can't tell me kids and adults can't love that. But you know. I, the stuff that I usually tend to enjoy, like the more mature anime that I tend to enjoy, is stuff like The Promised Neverland. Yes, that was a freaking awesome anime. Oh my Because it's more of like, less about like, it doesn't have to be gory to be something adult. It also can be something that makes you think a lot. Something that has like a central theme that probably would go over some kids heads i think god forbid we'll throw a party on the day i get to the end of naruto i'll tell you that right now <laughs> dude oh my gosh there's so many dude, it is so good because it freaking so good. my because uh what is there? Like, what are dude okay, okay so like, the there's oh. like 300 episodes of ship it in and then there's like dude what? that's five, a lot 560 of the regular one the original yeah I mean, well just stuff, stuff like that you really to get a real bearing of how much it is you're like when you say a lot that's not a number but when you're like 500 or what was that like probably seven 700 episodes a lot of anything to watch but, but some, some of those you can skip, skip because some of them are filler. But. Yeah, that's, that's a so weird, weird thing in, in anime. I always thought the ones that had nothing to do with it, it just like them the go plot. <laughs> to, the, to or fro, them, them going, going to the cool playing. I, I would never last. I'm, I'm on that. I'm on the spot right now where they're like, um, Sasuke just got taken away in that box or whatever it was. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I'm far back, man. I'm far. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm just going to I'm just going to skip the fillers and just freaking push through because I heard Shippuden is awesome. Dude, yeah. where you're at though was like the highlight of like when I was like 10 years old. Yeah. I know I used to watch wow. it every week it would come on Cartoon Network. Yeah, I'm saying Cartoon Network. 
like That's 8 awesome. p.m. Yeah, every day was but every week you were watch I was watching that Saturday night man it was yeah, so, so awesome I used to have to ask permission to go to my friend's house just for that hour because it was kind of eight to nine you know what I mean? really you just go to that dedication well I didn't have I didn't have cable or nothing so I had to go to my buddy's house I used to sit down in my room in the dark with like a bowl of popcorn and a blanket over me on the floor and then watch it when it came on I just want to kind of wrap up the the kids or child thing. Like, I feel like if you have that that um, that bias or that opinion on anything two D being just for kids or childish, like you gotta expand your horizons past Disney. You know, like, like if, if, if all you're watching Nickelodeon, Disney, like Nickelodeon, all that stuff, like. You, you know, I understand where where you're coming from, but like like Alex and Ian said, and even Tara. Even Ter well, even even Terrell, like you know, there's a lot of mature content in these cartoons. I honestly believe oh, like that mature content. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh my wow. gosh. Bazinga. Uh, anyway. Bazinga. Uh, but you know, there's just you just gotta expand your horizon. You gotta give it a chance. You gotta have a soft heart going in there because there's just there's so much good stuff that are just in an anime. A soft or heart, but not a fragile one, because some of those stories might. Make you cry. Yeah, wreck or your mess life. Mess you up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but anywho, on to our question number two for 2D animation. So what's what? I kind of want to just open it up. Let's just have everybody kind of put in their two cents whenever they feel like it. But what are the strengths of animation over live action movies slash shows? Oh, dude, like the like, just like the sequencing. You know, I think. Because with action movies, at least like, like okay, except for like Alita Battle Angel, which is isn't that based on a comic? Okay, and that's also like three D anime. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but like, let's say you watch yeah, like Stan Fast and Furious. You know what I mean? There's only so much they can do with cars. But like with anime, that like car can turn into a fucking rocket. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the anime, there's. You, I think that action is so much better because you never know what to expect, dude. There's so many. There's so many different. Freedom. Yes, there's freedom of creativity. I also think this this is one of my own theories. It's the consistency that you don't you're not taken out of the experience. You're not like, oh, that looks cheap or that doesn't look real. Oh, that's bullshit. That wouldn't happen because it's not real. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, it's all it's one sequence, to... so you're like, oh yeah, I t you can get into the story because you're not poking holes in it. I also yeah. think that you can make a lot more stories with animation because it's not limited by a budget. The, the, the movies are or the people it, for yeah. that matter you can make the character look exactly how you envision them do they use the same voice actors every yes in animation they use a lot like um, the guy that does Fry and Futurama he does a lot of stuff voice you if when you once you follow the voice acting which I, I like you you realize a lot of people do the same stuff like the guy did well, this is a okay, date myself here but and, um, the guy that did Starscream in the original Transformers and the guy that did Cobra Commander are the same person. Wow. Yeah, it just, there's, a, it's a very there's a lot of shows that I've that I've watched where I heard like the, that I've heard like the the same voice actor. I'll be like, I know him. He's this character from this show. That's nice. And it's like you can always pick out their voice. That's probably why they use them because there's something familiar that people will like. No, they're just good. So that's not easy to do voices and like looking at Mark Hamill. Oh yeah, he's the only Joker. Do like he, the only, like he like I don't feel like he Joker wasted his sense. career. Most people mm -hmm. when you're in a big movie and you kind of see him later on, you're like, oh really? Yeah, I guess that's cool. But hey, I'm like, dude, I love your, I love the Joker. You did an excellent job. Luke Skywalker is lame. The Joker's awesome. You did something with your life. You're not some washed up has been. You actually <laughs> did something with your and he does a lot of stuff. Yeah. Did um you guys ever seen Brother Bear? Yes. Oh, I love Brother Bear. Dude, the voice actor for the older Brother Bear is Joaquin Phoenix. Did you guys know really? that? Yeah, if you guys listen to it, it's Joaquin Phoenix. I figured what? that out the other day. Yeah. The freaking bigger brother. The Joker. The, the maniac. He's a bear. <laughs> He's, he's an actor, though. You know yeah. that. Right? Yeah, I was just, I, I've just seen that movie so many times I didn't put two and two I like together. the people that don't do a voice. Like the guy that does Joe off of Family Guy. He just does his voice. I'm like, how lazy is that? Theater. Theater. Yeah, he's no, just like, isn't that freaking... Uh, that's uh, he's Kronk. Kronk. Yeah, he's Kronk. Kronk. Emperor's I know new he, he is, but he Kronk doesn't sound different than he talks. He just talks That's how that guy normally talks. Yeah. Oh. Like, he, he was the host of like the show, the series of Unfortunate Events. He's like the host guy. He talks exactly the same. He sounds like Kronk. 
I was like, how does he get money for not doing a voice? Everybody else is a voice actor. Everyone just, just wants to hear the sound of his voice. Yeah. Yeah, he does. It's like Morgan Freeman, you know? It's like. Also, the guy that plays Archer, he does his voice too. I'd pay Morgan Freeman to read me a bedtime well, uh, story. Just walk, <laughs> he just walks in his studio. Every time. Yeah. He just walks in his studio and they're just, just like, just, sleep. just do what you do, man. Just wear, just read it. Just read that's it. what they do with Robin. That's what they did with Robin Williams. They just let him like go do your thing. They just put him in front of a microphone and here you go. You know what's crazy though is I actually watched um, Tom Hanks. Uh, yeah. He he did an interview about like how Disney is. Uh, how they do the whole um, voice acting thing. And he said, Tom Hanks made it out to be a very stressful job. Like, you would have to do the same line over and over and over again. Whoever's the director, whoever thinks it's supposed to sound a different way, he would do it. And he did it with Tom Holland. And it was pretty crazy um, about how he's like, all right, tell me you need some coffee. Oh, Tom, I need some coffee. All right, tell me with more hesitation. All right, tell me like this. Tell me like this. Slow it down. Blah, blah, blah. Like over and over and over again. And I'm just like, holy cow. But then you got people like Robin Williams where Robin Williams is just an amazing person. Like you have to let Robin Williams do his thing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, And if he didn't do his thing, the genie wouldn't be what the genie is today. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I really, you know. <laughs> get the genie with a freaking, get that taste out of my mouth. Yeah. But that's super cool. But it was not the same. Um, but for well, me, like, I'm glad that they didn't try to make it the same too. Because I'm like, yeah. I feel like if if Will Smith had tried to mimic oh, yeah. Robin Williams' performance, it would have been a lot worse. You know, but like, I actually I gotta say Will Smith did a did a good job for him. You know, like yeah. like, like for, for me it was like I was watching it and I was looking to put it down because I'm like, dude, you cannot like. Robin Can't Williams, to me, Robin like, especially Robin after his suicide, like I have such a soft heart for Robin Williams mm -hmm. that it just like it, it, it hurts me every time he comes comes up because it's like wow, like Robin Williams, I can't believe like that guy. That, the, is gone. The guy that brought me so much joy and happiness like didn't have enough to not do what he did, you know. Yeah. And that's just dark. We're not going to get into that. But I love Robin Williams, and but what Will Smith did was make it his own thing, and it was like a Will Smith genie. I thought it was great, you know. It was different, you know. Disney, uh, well, Will Smith did a good job. I don't know how Disney did, but Will Smith did a good job. But uh, for me, um, animation uh, definitely beats live action as far as creativity goes. You can create anything with 2D animation. Absolutely. With with live action, what live action has, and this isn't part of our question, but I think I should mention it. Live action has realism that we can connect with characters. I think on a on a more humane level. Like, don't get me wrong, emotionally, may, like, you can do with both. But, like, to put yourself in the shoes of the character, I think you're you're more likely to do that in a live-action movie. Yeah. You know? Which brings me to my next question about, like, what's our opinions of remakes from animation to live-action movies? What's your guys' opinions on remakes of animations to live action. You know, Disney's been doing a lot. I mean, shoot, I can't think of one that wasn't a disappointment that was done from an anime show that I liked. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's just my opinion, so I'm just throwing it out there. I know. Um, right, they had a Tokyo Ghoul movie, they had a Death Note movie, and I think... I had a Full Metal Alchemist, Alchemist. They're, they're trying to do some Dragon Ball Z. All oh, of them, yeah. like, I can I smell it from here. Like, it's just like... Pure dumps, like you know. <laughs> like we're not talking about like a healthy fiber filled dump. We're talking like I was sick and I've been eating chicken. Ate too much chili. Chicken, yeah. They said, I think they set themselves up to fail because unless you're telling a new story with the same characters, it's just like we've already seen it before. So it'll look a little bit nicer, but you're not going to gain anything from. You know, I, I don't think you will remember too much from it. Like the thing that got me, I'm like, if you're going to make a movie like a Death Note movie. Use, use different characters, characters like make a new story yeah. because if you're going to use the same characters you're never going to make it as good as the anime was to most, to most people they're trying to capitalize on the money that's and Charles, you, you talk to us I think you have a, a very um, a specific opinion that, that maybe I wouldn't have but like you were like you. I've seen you you're really good when it comes to Marvel knowledge you know because oh, yeah. um, you've watched a lot of DC comics you've watched a lot of those cartoons oh, things yeah. that we had growing up how do what's, what's your, your so because, because they've done a lot of live action with that, that me personally i think they did a great job with that but i wasn't a true fan i would say of like all the comics you know what, what would you how, what's your i think they all the, those they do a good job on because they're the fantastical in nature 
they're mythical where death note doesn't focus really that's not the the essence of the story it's more about his journey as a person they i don't know it's like they don't watch the the in the anime that they're based on it really a lot of the, the problems i have with this it, like it's not because they do a bad job it's like they don't watch it they, they you know they go off and you're like like oh what, what's the elements everyone likes we're not going to do any of that they they like the death uh, like the death note. They butchered it. She's like she said. That's the guy's not like the character. It's just that's a lot of media though. I think they honestly don't watch their own material. They're so concerned with making money that they don't actually try to make something, take risks to make good art. Right. No. I, uh, I to me this is my biggest, and I just had to say this, but this is my biggest um, pet peeve about when they remake stuff is if you're gonna remake something, right? I understand, I understand that, that like, like when you're trying to make some whatever, whatever the case may be with your time frame you have to fit it in you, you have, have to watch, watch it for one okay second, second off there the, you can't you can't change anything you shouldn't change anything and i'm talking even for people who are for the marvel universe there's a lot of people who are irritated about you know uh the last marvel uh movie with uh, infinity war you know yeah. um you know that everything you can't change anything now what you can do that i think anybody who's ever made anything we're not just talking about 2d animation oh, wait, they were end game end game yeah a lot of people were upset with end game um just because of uh situations with the hulk and him not going crazy like he should have and basically being the that would have been sick it would have been it would have been but um for me it's like you can't change anything but you can add things that yeah, don't change, change anything and when they uh, every time a remakes happen and it's been done beautifully and they've somehow because i feel like what they want to do is they want to they want to put their flair on it or make it their own but you're remaking something that people have an emotional attachment to and like you can't change the plot you can't change the the things but you can add things that don't change anything that might make it a new, you might put your flair on it you know yeah, yeah like that's yeah give it a new experience you know uh, and i feel like that's what that's what they're missing that's their missing piece you know they screwed it up that's also why i said if you're gonna make something that's like already been made if you're not gonna do take the effort to make it exactly how it was in like the animated version make a different story based on the same thing yeah yeah Make, make something, something completely you know what they should just let fans it. make it i swear to god most of it really is because the person isn't a fan he's some dude that came in that you did the x-men movie right we'll do this movie good it's not actually anyone that likes the material a fan wouldn't wouldn't butcher the story and, and how hard is it i think i've talked about this before but how hard would it have been if i'm going to make a movie that i expect to make billions of dollars okay make me very wealthy Okay, how hard would it be for me, especially nowadays, put on Twitter, put on Facebook, get a survey going, ask people who are legit fans, go find something where fan, those fans or that audience that you know are gonna be the hardest to, um, to please, go on there and put a survey up. What do you expect from this remake I'm playing doing? How hard would it be? It wouldn't be hard at all. And then take that data, yes, it would take you hours, more extra hours on your end, but I guarantee you the significant exponential difference would be so worth it. And it's so easy. Like how easy is it for it to, for, for me as a director, I'm well known now, whatever, I'm, I'm James Spielberg, whatever. And then I'm just like, hey guys, I'm remaking Mortal Kombat. Okay, I'm gonna remake, remake that, that movie because everybody, everybody thinks, thinks it sucked back in the day. Spielberg, that'd be right. awesome. Um, I need gamers. I need people with a passion. I need people who want it. Also, I'm gonna interview the game, the original game makers themselves. Post that up, right, for all the people who say they're fans to see and let them know this I can't deviate from because this is from the original creators. But what do you guys expect? Let that data come in, hire people to go through it that are also fans themselves, give me the juiciest part, and do my research on that and then decide what I want to put in the movie. Like yes, that's a lot of extra effort, like but maybe but I'm just saying the exponential significant benefit that you would have from that is so much better. And it's so easy to do just to like let people send them your stuff. Like, you know, it's just so easy to ask a question. You have Facebook, you have social media, you have so many avenues to get in people's opinion. Uh, what I think the essential thing I think they do is they they don't watch it for one, and they try to make something middle of the road. No one's going to be have their feelings hurt. They don't take any risks, and the story suffers from it. You know, I love the Batman movies. 
I want to I want to fucking Batman to die at the end of the movie because he would die. He's that'd be the ultimate sacrifice. But they don't do stuff like because they want another movie. They they sacrifice quality for making it. <laughs> Deviating from the original story also goes with, like, if you don't understand the story that you're trying to portray, then you're not going to create something that's faithful to the source material. That's an issue that I had with Game of Thrones, like, because they, yeah, after that. the books ran out, it started to deviate very, like, it started, basically you could feel a change in the way that it was written afterward. Yeah. Because, yeah, because they didn't have the source material, and and, and uh, the guy that made it, he put a lot of effort in there. That's that's something they didn't touch. This guy did research on European history. He put some real effort. He made intentionally the characters to be ambiguous so that you wouldn't root for them. They would be human. No, the Hollywood machine is like, oh, well, then we'll just give them this, and they, and they tone it down. It's like eating junk food. Now, there's no meat to it, and that's what a lot of the movies lack. They do not lack. Any abruptness, any any real like, oh, I feel bad for him. It's just like, oh, we're gonna keep it open ended so we can have everybody watch it. Everybody watches crap. Have a exclude a couple of the people that want it to perm out perfect. Yeah, they also said they wanted to tone down the fantasy elements. I'm like, it's a fantasy show. Mm -hmm. That's the fucking point. Mm -hmm. I'm like, people liked it because of the way that it was. They liked it because it was Game of Thrones. I'm like. You don't have to change it for Tone a wider it down. audience. Tone it down. still had dragons. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's like people don't watch it. They're like, oh. Again, it all comes back to someone not actually being faithful. To them, not actually liking it. Just trying to be like, huh, how can we squeeze money out of it? And they end up making crap. I think he's a, a good example of a good remake was Joker, for sure. I don't know if you consider that or That's really not really. Around. I think that's like an alternate, like origin story. But they that's did. It like took risk remake. because it's an unusual story. He's not your typical Joker. He's not the little. <laughs> he's he's crazy. He's like that one. See, that's artistic risks. He's he could, clinical. <laughs> yeah, he could. He actually is crazy. You actually feel sad for him. That is a risk in the story. They went a new direction. And, it and they, they earned like over a billion dollars for doing it too. Because it's a good movie. So it a, yeah, it I liked it. it. Really I'm with Alex. I don't consider it the same. Like I, it's it's so far from Joker. I kind of figure he's a guy that just calls himself that. He's not. He's not much. Yeah, to me, I took it as like a separate story. Yeah. Yeah. Because it like I was, I was just kind of thinking of like the Batman universe kind of differently. Yeah. But then that's also what I think you talked about, Alex. Is is you talked about basically that um, if you're gonna do something different, you have to you have to separate it from the plot. Yeah, you have to separate it from the plot, but use the same principles. I mean, we could I could talk about Star Wars all day about how frustrating that was. Okay, but um, no, I don't know one person that likes it. Do they not watch the shows beforehand? I want to meet the fan. The ones like, well, I actually like that they had Ray Hub was over over overpowered. I like all that. I mean, one person. <laughs> Just find one, one person. Leave a comment if you're that person. <laughs> I don't like Harry Potter, Tell so we all out about. there. We yeah. Know. Hey, we'll, we'll take it. I don't care. I don't, but, I don't hear the thoughtful post. I'm like, okay, you know, I don't think that, but it's well defended. I can handle when you have a if you you do if you deviate, as long as it's a well defended opinion. All right. Like you don't like time travel is illogical, and you wouldn't do it, even though I would roll the dice and probably cause super Hitler. He wouldn't. <laughs> that ruins the experience. Super for me. mecha Hitler. It's ruins the experience for me because I'd roll the dice, but he does defend his opinion well. It's careless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get me started on time travel. Oh, but uh, all right. Well, hey guys, this was a fun experience. You know, we thank you everybody for for listening in on our first podcast. Um, you know, uh, this is James, Terrell, Seth, and Alex. You guys got anything to say to these beautiful people Wait, before we sign off? Where's Seth? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Seth's still doing homework. Where's, where's, Seth, uh, Seth, the well, spirit uh, is with James, us. James, Terrell, Ian, Alex, you guys got anything uh, to say to these beautiful people before we sign right, off? I have, I have a theory that I was thinking about. Just so, just so you guys can think about this. <laughs> um, okay, so I was thinking about the other day. is like, okay, you know how you have dreams? that feel like so real like they feel like you're living it out right what if when you die all that happens is you dream a real a, a dream so real that it just becomes your next life think about that um, Alex? I... <laughs> <laughs> how, do I, how do i follow that up <laughs> I, 
you know, you should probably save that for like the next podcast. Like we should probably brainstorm go over that. that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we need to go a little more in depth about that. Know, about, you know, Alex, I'll restart. Gonna, I'll Alex restart. is going to edit all this stuff. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I just so dropped a bomb at the end. How should we sign off from this, guys? I'll just write. <laughs> Dreams, not, not Terrell's video game. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we're so we're thankful, thankful that you guys were able to join us tonight. You know, we are uh, the Council of Misfits, where we offer fun perspectives, witty humor, and individuality. This is James, Terrell, Ian, and Alex signing out. See you next week, folks. That's a wrap.